this 2023 World Ten Bowl Champion. Welcome to the Predator WPA Men's World Ten Ball Championship. Let's go. We got a great match for you today. Representing Mexico, Mr. Ruben Bautista. And you know, representing Germany, Joshua Filler. Let's get it on. And good morning, everyone. We are in Las Vegas, as you're well aware, at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. And this opening match uh, on the one loss side, this is round one of the one loss side. So both players have uh, played one match and they lost it. So one of them is facing elimination. But we are at the this is CSI Expo where Predator and Run Support the Rico present the Predator WPA World Ten Ball Championships. 64 players competing for $250,000, 75 to the winner. Round one loss, as we just spoke. And we're off and running. This is George Dejaya and Eric Porlefson bringing you the live action. And that was Raw Hannah with the introduction. Pleasure to be with you guys again. This is Goliath battle here. Batista more than capable. Strong regional player, has some wins wherever he plays in his regional tours. A couple of decent international finishes against one of the top players in the world, if not the top, Josh Filler. Going down to Alex Pagulain in the first round. Bautista. Lost to Sullivan Clark. Bautista is the number one player in Mexico and has been for a while. Uh, Pan American champion. Uh, Jay Swanson runner up. Plays out at bogeys and comes up to Texas quite a bit. As Eric was saying, we were talking about him earlier. I watched him in Mexico City up against uh, Max Eberly and winning the tournament down there. He's uh, rather strong in Mexico. And I'd have to say he's along the lines of some of the real strong older Mexican players like Ernesto Dominguez, Ismael Paez, uh, Rafael Martinez. Yeah, he's been around the game for a long time, more than capable. He's 34 years old, Joshua 27, an 850 Fargo, number one in the world, uh, Bautista, a 752. So we have 100 points difference in Fargo in these races to four. Uh, in a race to four. According to Fargo, he could almost give him two games on the wire. Really? Almost. That's surprising yeah. that's that much. In a race of seven, it's at least uh, three games on the wire. Surprising how much the difference is. Sure. Well, at, Fargo says that at 100 points, you are approximately twice as good as your opponent. Hmm. And that's saying a lot, especially in short races. And plus, you get a player um, over 650, and, I mean, they can compete with you because their range is another 100 points. Yeah. They can run racks. Yeah, it's one of those ones, I think it's it's how the stats have extrapolated over sure. time. If Josh was to give Ruben two to four for 10 hours, I think Robert, I think Ruben would win. Uh, I, I agree. But extrapolated over time, whatever different situations, 100 points means a lot. It sure does. And on the break, was that Joshua that broke the ball? Somewhere? Yeah, he chose to break from, the, break from the middle in the first break here. One of the main things that tripped him up against Alex is that he only made a ball on about 15% of the breaks, which is very low for him. He broke from the side railing in all his breaks in that match, so he looked to go from the middle here. A couple safety exchanges. Josh ended up getting better of it. First look at an open table here. Josh has played a lot of these Pro Series events. He, he generally favors the side rail, but taking note of what happened in that first round match, he's going to give, took at least one shot from the middle here in the first game. We have some monsters in the one loss side uh, lineup. Max Lechner for one. Shane Van Bonen was Shane defeated. Van Bonen was defeated yesterday, that's right. Um, so it's going to be tough for these guys on, on that side of the bracket. Players will be filtering in, filtering in to try to get back to a stage two 
single knockout final 16 stage. Players starting in this round will have to win four matches to get back to that part of the tournament. We will go through these uh, last five balls. Some of the monsters on that one loss side are Victor Zielinski, Scott Woodward, John Mora, Nayuki Oi, of course this gentleman here, uh, Conrad Yushushin, Jason Klatt, Tyler Steyer, Marco Tucher, Max Lechner, as I mentioned. So uh, it's going to be no easy uh, task. Some of these guys might go to and out in this big tournament. Yeah, best players in the world competing for you this week here. We also have the women's showdown that will continue today. It's a round robin format. They'll be playing the second stage of their round robin portion of the tournament. They're getting through this rack nicely, taking rack number one. See if he sticks from the middle in rack two. How do you feel is a good uh, formula for uh, for the break? If you're not successful in the first one, you try again the next one, or you do a couple breaks and then the next one. I think switch. I think you have to have one break that's kind of like your A break. So I think it's okay to stick with that one two or three times. I don't know. You you have to read how the how the balls are racking. Even. You know, you're going to get pretty consistent racks from ref to ref, but I think if one ref is kind of struggling with the rack more than the other, then you would favor the side rail. That's Dave, our referee from Amarillo, Texas. Back in the balls for these gentlemen. Josh Schiller to break game number two. Going back to the middle here again. I think over the course of the time, the, the one that the players have favored is from the side rail playing 10 ball. But the funny part about the middle break was Catchy won the tournament last year, and he was one of the only players to break from the middle. Yeah, but he was one of the only players to hit in about 30 miles an hour, too. Yeah, the middle, <clears throat> excuse me. The middle break is the tougher one to execute, but if you are able to hit it well, it can prove strong dividends. I totally agree. You want to get that little hop and you want to try to stick it right in the middle of the table. But uh, I, for one, have a lot of problems with that. I keep hitting it off to the side. It's a tough I go one. Sideways. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough one to hit and control. Yeah. So Filler's 0 for 2 from the middle now. So overall, just struggling on the break in this tournament. We'll have to find it. No matter how good you shoot, you need to throw in some breaking runs here and there. At least maintain advantage after the break. Got away with this one, but Bautista had to push. Josh is going to maneuver this down the rail, I think. I think this slides down the rail. Yeah. It looks like it from the overhead. I think Bautista might not have pushed there if it, if it looked as easy as it was from the overhead. It gives it back. It must not go. Safes aren't easy here. Could play an aggressive carom onto the six. High percentage. I think the one across table. Not much coverage down by the top right corner pocket. Players are on the shot clock, 30 seconds. One extension. Oh, he missed the entire ball. I wonder how straight that cue ball rolled. And that's nothing to do with the equipment, just when you roll a ball over that much distance, over that little speed, you can catch just minute rolls one way or the other. And that appeared to have a little bit of left-hand English on it, so that would have steered it away from the ball, too. Mm -hmm. Could have just missed it. It was a thin hit overall. See, with ball in hand, that was easy to, to slide down from where he was to begin with. Much harder. Right. It was looking good for filler here. Maintain some angle between three and four to five. 
keep in mind that it's two races to four. If they are tied, it goes to a third in deciding set. And if that one is tied, then it does go to a shootout. Stage two will be a best of five sets under those same stipulations. Quick work of his uh, time at the table. It's cute. Wow. There's a chance for Batista to need it as well. I, that may be one of the first times I've seen Phil Miss cute. Oh, it was, a, it was a rare one, too, because yeah. he wasn't really, I guess he was kind of trying to hit draw it, hold the angle a little bit, but it wasn't like a power draw where you usually see a miscue like that. Oh. They're coming up short here. And when you do this against a champion like Joshua, he just feeds off that energy. Yeah, anytime you're coming in as the underdog, you have to assert yourself. You know, the, the favorite is going to look to just roll you over. I'm not saying that this rack is over for Batista. But when you have chances like that, you gotta take it. There we go. In the rack there. Recovery. Mexico's finest. Play in this tournament yet? Yeah. It's um, I think played in it uh, three or four years ago. Okay. They have been in twenty. Did they play in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen? It's been four years. Twenty nineteen. That's experience at the high level. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think the pressure will be anything like that soon. Twenty nineteen, man, hadn't been held before. Uh, Twenty fifteen was when Kofi Nee won, and Carlo Viado was runner up. Twenty nineteen, Kofi Chung. In fact, uh, Joshua Filler was runner up. Twenty twenty one, twenty twenty, they kicked us out just before this tournament out of Vegas because they closed it down for COVID. The sky was falling too. <laughs> It was raining inside. <laughs> Rain for a little while after That's that. That's right. And um, but I'll tell you, in, 20, in 2021, one of the finest matches I've seen yet in the World Ten Ball was between um, a semifinalist, uh, Johan Chua, and Naoyuki Oi. If you guys can uh, look that up on uh, on YouTube, one of the finest matches you'll ever see. Some great, great shots from both players. I was so impressed. I was like dumbfounded. Uh, Chua would come with something great, and then so would Naoki Oi. Both Korea player. I'm sure. Batista hit that break perfect. Ten ball was the only ball that went in. It's good enough for him to stay at the table. Early tens don't count in the WP format. Tens in the break don't count as well. Really hit the rack well here. He has a shot on the one. Cue ball's playing towards the three. Might be a little hard to slow it down. A lot of safe options if he doesn't like the offense. He doesn't really have a shot to go right into the three to stop it for the two, does he? Does he? If he plays it in the left hand side, plays the one on the left. I think, yeah, he could play some right spin, just run mm -hmm. squarely into it, play the, and play the two on the side. That's a thought. Yeah, the problem is if he misses, is it sells out the rack. So he's going to play safe all the way. And nice shot. Short rail. Can't go two rails behind him. A long short rail here. Mm 
What a good hit. And it's going to turn out pretty good for him. Well, not so much. I thought I was going to keep rolling by the two. Yeah, he's just going to have a look here. So he's had a couple of looks, took advantage of one, and won, won the second game. And here we are in the third. Now this young man, when he comes to the table, he means business, so... Except for that one time that he got behind the ball. See what he handles here. Yeah, it's kind of typical Latin style, free-flowing. Reminiscent of Paez and Martinez. Mm -hmm. Never forget Ismael Pius at the Q Club at Vegas playing him in the tournament. <laughs> break and run the first rack, break try. <laughs> Next time I shoot, it's eight to one. In about 30 minutes. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> and then he goes up to the, uh, the tournament director and says, I think I found my stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I played him. Mm -hmm. Good guy. It's fun to play. rack nicely. Not much work left to do here and he'll be up 2-1 in the first set. Now if there's a format where uh, David can beat Goliath, it's this one. Definitely. But it's funny how uh, towards the end of the tournament you see the same faces. All the top players. For the Davids in these, in these type of terms is just to deal with the pressure. Mm -hmm. But the race length definitely favors them a little more. Well, the 750 three pack is no problem. But just clearing the rack when you get an opportunity like this one right here. Shot from filler. That was on the miscue. He hasn't missed the ball yet. Got out of that one off positional play by jumping six in. In filler, 0 for 2 on the break. So that's what's been hurting him in this tournament. I know it hurt him against Alex. Yeah, he was about 50% yeah. over the course of the match. Right? I think Garrick and I did that match. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alex playing an excellent moving game. Yeah. Pocketing had, balls, just everything. Yeah, had a chance of at the table almost every rack and just kind of moved his way around filler. Alex is in the winner's qualification match against Coping Yi. Some other big matchups in that round are Coping Yi versus Alvin Ocean. Will come in. Will did a fine job on um, Shane Van Boney. Not hard to blank him a set and then 4 1 in the next. Yeah, he's, playing, he's playing very well, won the Las Vegas Open men's division earlier in the week. For him to be a threat. I think Batista has to go at this. It's thin. Cue ball's moving naturally towards the two. Safe is behind the six. His thinking's in between here. Players have one minute after the break and they're on a 30 second shot clock after that.
Place perfect to get on the three. A little stun up for the three ball on the side, the four in the corner, and things look good for Bautista. Again, Bautista is probably the best player in Mexico at this point. much angle here, but he'll be able to stun to the left of the eight. The rest of the ball's available throughout the rack, so all for Batista's taking here. And we'll slow it down. Good shot. With Phil losing a few matches over the course of the week, you know, he'll know how to come back, but at the same time, it's not like he's in his typical team rolling mode here. Mm -hmm. We get to the final 32 in the Las Vegas Open. Longer than the usual result for him. John Mora played good in the match to beat. You have to play well to beat. That was a great match. Still holding his nerve here, a little too much angle on the eight. The cue ball will be coming back up table for the nine. Some three rails here for the nine on the side. I was going to say, he's back cutting the ball. Most players cut that to the other side. Kind of like going the other way. Yeah. It, probably Same here. when you're over the ball, you do, it didn't look like as much cut as it did on mm -hmm. the overhead. It was a 50 50, but. Uh, he got it done, and now is three games ahead, three, uh, three to one. Excuse me. Three games. Played well, he's doing the break very well too. Haven't made the balls behind the one straight back in the side, but definitely getting good contact with the rack. Bautista is a newly signed Predator player. He's also sponsored by In the Box, Remolques Hase. And we got the study. Josh Feller, top Fargo rated player in the world, and on the AZB money list, number one, with over $346,000. Right here. Yes, yeah, sure is. I've seen years like that in the pool and since the mid 2000s when the IPT was around. Mm -hmm. Money improving in all, in all promoters. And he's also number one right now in 2024 with an outstanding performance in Derby City. I still I still refer to that one pocket match against uh, Evan Munda. Nine minutes and five seconds. A race of three. I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't on tape. <laughs> no. It's, you find it on YouTube and it says nine minutes and five seconds. It's the nine. One goes. Close to be able to get through to the two here. Looks like he's going after it. Batista doing all he can. Didn't quite get the right position he wanted. Still going to be a safe available here. He's taking away the right short rail. No one's having a look at it. If he is able to hit it through that rail, it would be a lot of right spin. Contact from filler, but gonna leave the three. Wouldn't this be something? Such an outstanding performance at Derby City, and then he goes 
if he was to go to and out here. Yeah, the threes that nestled up to the nine kind of oddly. So much to the point that it might not even be available. But it's off the early. We're still in the first set. And that young man, Mr. Filler, can't count out the killer. It's called the nine. It's actually missable, though, the way it's lying. This is okay. Control the three. Big safe shot here for Martinez in the first set. He looks kind of a little bit like Rafael Martinez. He does. From a distance, like from right here, uh, that could be Rafael, except the stroke is very different. Rafael pumps it so well. I remember. He's got such a big stroke. I've seen, I've seen that guy put more English on the ball than, than, than I thought was possible. He's available past the five. And you know, sometimes it takes shots like this for uh, Davids to battle with Goliath. I think he might have edged him on the four. And shots like that. Yeah, still maintaining the edge in this rat. And it leaked out on him a little bit. Not bad for filler. Another safety or you think he'll bank at this? Could. I mean, it's a shot at winning with that. Sure. Safes aren't that easy. Could play the cue ball behind the eight if we want to go safe. Not sure if that leaked out or not. I think it did. It was tough to lay the cue ball exactly behind the 10 there. <laughs> he missed cute again. What's up with that? in disbelief. Look at, look at his face in his chair. Right. Now that is something I know I've never seen. I have to see him miss Q twice at the same time. Well, at least a little bit too much angle here. Six is pretty sharp in the side. He can come to the top right corner pocket. Doesn't want to hold to the side. I wouldn't mind getting where the cue ball is now and banking it to the side for position on the seven. Maybe just a little bit more to the left. Option as well. You can get enough right spin to run into the ten ball here. That's a good shot. Slow roll down. Gonna have to play him in the side with a bit of speed. But I think it's out enough from the rail. Up on the speed there, made sure of the pocketing. One more good positional shot here, and Batista will be taking the first set. Joshua Filler not accustomed to finding himself in this position. And at this point, um, I don't want to say helpless in this chair, but there's nothing he can do to stop him. Yeah, well, Not here. Batista will be leading off the break in the second set of sure. Chose the easy route for position instead of going around. Smart move, especially since the 10 is off the rail. He takes the first set. On Bautista's part, Ruben showing some. Uh, he showed a little bit of nerve at the beginning, and then now he's uh, over the, over that, I guess. Yeah, he ran two racks all the way from the outset. 
didn't break and run any racks, but broke well and maintained advantage in three of the games that he broke in. And he's, he won four games in a row, which is exactly what it takes in this kind of type of a format. Every opportunity gets put to use. Some interesting early developments here at the World 10 Ball Championships. Filler one set away from elimination. Here we go, a 925 overall performance compared to a 700. And all of a sudden that 850 Fargo against the 752 doesn't look so bad. Yeah, Batista was on zero balls missed for the set. Bautista also uh, with the safety efficiency. Oh, missed one safety. Still showed him at 100%. Missed that one that leaked out. Still had him on a ten. Yeah, it, or, oh, sorry, yeah. yeah, ten, yeah. No, you're right. And then and Filler was cute, yeah. The biggest thing for Filler is going to get his break going, regardless of whether it's against Batista or any other player. Get to the point where he's at least making balls on the break. Yeah. He made a ball, didn't he? Yeah, one down for Batista here. No shot on the one. Lots of balls to hide behind down into the racking end. Didn't find cover on this one. A little bit trying the same. Could actually get the one up table. In most cases, you get the cue ball up table here. Bank the one near the six. There's a huge ball of walls. And diagonally over to that part of the table. That's the other shot I saw. Oh my. Things are just not going well for Phil in this match. Wednesday is just not his day. Be on Batista to take advantage. Wow, he's been in Las Vegas since uh, he started playing on Tuesday last week. Played the Las Vegas Open. He played the mixed doubles. Three passes the eight. So with a small shake of the head there, probably just got too straight where he can't move the cue ball exactly how he wants. Being alive here, five pockets in the side. Take the cue ball to the left of the seven. You know, as I watch um, Bauti Ruben Bautista here from Mexico, playing with a wooden shaft. I'm wondering uh, what equipment he'll uh, receive from Predator. Will he go to carbon fiber or go with their Vantage or one of the other one of the other wooden shafts? Yeah, it's getting to a point where about 80% of pros are on carbon now, mm -hmm. I would say. Some options from Predator in that department if you're looking to go that way. 12.9, 12.4, and 11.8 millimeter tip sizes. Do you like the thinner shafts or, or kind of in between? I like heavier tapers personally. Tip diameter, I'm, I'm okay around 12.5. The longer, the pro taper, the long one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's my preference. Although I have played with uh, uh, the X Pro uh, from Tiger that has the conical taper. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that I liked that for But uh, so the, But I still, I do prefer the, the pro taper. He's answering the call here so far. A lot of the players from Latin America have a certain amount of three cushion background as well. They really know their way around the table. Well, that's why they don't produce so many great players, is they, they all play three cushions. Cue ball here. Whoa. As close as you can come without scratching. Both both uh, corners of the 
of the pocket there to the side. So let's take a deep breath here. Tester on the 10. Kind of ahead of himself in this rack. The good thing is the opening of the side pocket gives him better queuing accessibility. Better queuing, he gives it. Takes game number one in set number two. Five games in a row he's rattled off against Josh Filler. Yeah, surprising developments here. Hundred percent on the break for the side. That's helped him a lot. Making a ball on, on the, and he's also been able to shoot the one every time he played safe on once, I believe. The other ones he shot the ball and made once. The last rack wasn't a break and run, was it? I don't recall. He had to play safe off the first shot. He actually yeah. hasn't had a break and run, right? But he, but he's maintained advantage. And that's the whole point of making that ball and break is you're at the table and you maintain control. We are at the CSI Expo here in Las Vegas at the Rio. 7,000 amateurs, all the teams are here. They're playing nine ball, they're playing teams. Got uh, 320 to 340 seven foot predator tables. 18 tables for the pros, these nine footers, the apex. All on the Arcadia cloth, performance cloth. And the Arcos two balls. He used to make two that time, and he's on the one. Made a wired ball straight back in the side as well. Traffic going forward here. It is possible to leave the cue ball outside the 10, possibly towards the rail side of the three. Let's do some calculations here. Three and the 10 both being big. Well, he's going to bank it just to avoid coming around the rails. Creative play here. Nice shot. I see that quite a bit. Yeah. When it's when, when it's straightforward like that. Yeah, it's a, it's like a dead end bank. The angle's already built in for you. Just gotta hit the ball straight, cue the ball well. Oh boy. From Batista, and this is the chance that Filler needed. You can see how quickly he was up out of his chair. Uses the 12 uh, 4 or the 12 9 move. I think, I think 12, he's on 4. 12 4. Yeah, I think it's 12 4 also. He tried the 11 8. Did he really? Yeah. It's a little too thin for me. The biggest difference uh, between 11 8 and 12 4 is that there's very, very little, if not call it zero, deflection in the 11 8. Mm -hmm. It's a huge advantage if you're able to get used to it. I mean, imagine you don't have to compensate for deflection anymore. You can just aim where, you're, where the target is, even if you're playing right and left spin. It's a concept that's completely foreign to players like us. That you know, this has only come up in the, in the past couple of years. And plus, most cues that are 11-8 deflect quite a bit. And also, you have to pinpoint where you hit the ball because it moves the cue ball more than any other cue. Yeah, you, you, you can. You, you have to be. You have to cue the ball strong sure. to play with an 11-8. But they actually have made a zero deflection cue, or like very little, call it, you know, like let much lower than low deflect. So that's what you're looking at when you're kind of thinking about what tip size to go in. Mm -hmm. One of the things. Tied at one, second set. Josh must win this one 
or face elimination from the tournament and send it to a third and deciding set. I think Phyllis is going to go to the side rail here. I think part of him going to the middle was he was trying to get an offensive break going for himself, but he also might have underrated how how strong Batista was going to come out. So he, he thought, well, if I leave an open rack, I, I might still be okay. But yeah, he's going back to the side rail here, coupled with the fact that he wasn't successful in the middle as well. Bridge half on, half off the rail. There goes the one. That's the one he's been searching for all tournament. Looks like he has an O, but the six just ruined the party. Yeah, I wonder if he'll get a, stay aggressive and try the combo here. If not, he can play the cue ball behind the three. Found the break. Getting that one ball to go straight into the side pocket. Yeah, he did like a modified break from the side rail there. The bridge was half on the rail, half off, so he could he was able to move the cue ball into the bed of the table a little more, but still attack it diagonally. And I did notice that bridge was a long one too. Mm -hmm. He's hitting him full speed. Back on the offense train here. Really, the first missed ball from Batista. See how much advantage Filler can take. <laughs> good timing, good fall through required to get through three rails on a thick ball like that. Well, Eric, we got the guys going in the chat. Regarding the deflection on the 11-8, yeah, I said more deflection. You said deflection less, but that's that one cue from Predator. What I was saying was, in general, 11-8 will give you more deflection, especially in wood shafts. Yeah, it, yeah, it's something to do with the carbon as well. But the, the lower the tip size, generally, the, the lower the, 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 that deflection. Excuse me. This rack nicely. Yeah, we'll be sticking with the same break next. And this is exactly what Ruben was trying to avoid: is turning the killer loose. Give him an opportunity to turn loose. And uh, he's on the run now. If he breaks him like the last one, it's trouble. That was a break and run. Yep, first break and run of the match. First successful break from Filler. He should be feeling good. Just to wait for his next chance. Well, you know, he he did his job. He beat uh, Joshua Filler five games in a row. <clears throat> Can't keep him off the table completely. Same break. Bridge half on, half off. Looks dry. Yeah, I hit it similarly, but not the same result. Bunch of balls on the left side of the table. They all pocket. The one for Batista. Might be a path between the three eight. Into a kick. Gave him the whole ball. Yeah, if you left the left side of it there, I don't really like it. 
Jump. We'll jump all over this. He'll cut it down. So. Oh, he's going to call it two rails. Two-way shot. Yep. Pretty much a safety. He should still be open on the deuce. He is. Is there cover, or did he leave a window? It's good there. Tough kick for Batista. There is something available off the right long rail. Just as tough, decided to take a half flyer at that one. That was the air rush he was using, so they got him some equipment. Mm -hmm. He already had it, one or the other. Mm -hmm. Short here, cue ball's running into the eight. Sad overall. Other than the opening game, this is his second lead in the match, as you just said. About to open it up to two if he keeps from miscuing. Yeah, that was the yeah, weird thing that tripped. It's weird to see those two, almost two in a row. Yeah. Pretty close. Trip further up in the first set there. It's two miscues. On very makeable balls, balls that he would, would have always made. If, uh, speed here, he's okay. Yeah, balls that he would have always made if he never missed Q. Do you stay above the side pocket as you come across? I think you can actually kill it, draw. Right. Balls are so good at slowing the ball down when they have too much angle like that. Mm -hmm. Not as easy as it looks. Requires very low cueing. Good feel for speed. Straight in 10 ball for a 3 to 1 lead. Batista did make the one mistake to let Filler back in. He was straight in on the 5. Just had over, not over hit the speed, but had to hit it with some speed going into the corner. Just didn't turn it the pocket perfectly. That was another break and run by Josh. Later, do you play safe in a couple three? saves at the beginning okay. of the rack. Didn't make a ball, actually. Actually not making a ball. I think he'll still stick with the same break attack here. Same side of the table, just a question whether he'll put his hand more on the rail or stick with this half on, half off. You can get a little more power when you go half on, half off like this. Kind of like just pinky on the rail, get the cue ball more out of the bed or more. Yeah, he's sticking with that. He's cutting it on purpose from that angle as well. You can see he's kind of playing over cue ball to the left. Really trying all he can do to get that one going. 
I think the break can work, but again, even in switching styles, he's only one for three. Let's see if Batista can do something here. Try sitting for a couple racks now. Pressure's mounting a little bit. Now I asked this question of Chris. When you're in the chair and you sat there for not three racks, what goes through your mind? Do you try to direct your thoughts? Do you let them get away? I mean, I think it's just something that doesn't happen all the time, right? It, it, it'll, it'll only happen with world-class players. Like, even if you're playing, you know, around 700, you're not going to really sit for three racks at a time. So I think it's just... It's a, it's a skill you have to develop, like being, being able to come back. For me, I, I think, you know, it's something about, like, stop, like, try to stop the bleeding. Like, maybe take a little more time in the first rack back. Build your confidence back naturally. That's kind of how I see it. But for a player that doesn't play in world-class events as, as much as Batista, he's not going to see that as much. And it's just, like, I know even for myself, you know, I play a lot of regional events while I'm going to shoot in a lot of games. So that skill is maybe not as developed for me. I think you just got to go out and play the game too. You know what I mean? If you start overthinking stuff like that, but the reality is the longer you sit, the colder you're going to get. So you have to have certain strategies to get yourself back in the match. Sure. And, and, and that's kind of why I asked the question is, you know, we all develop our and practice our physical game, uh, but not too much is said about the mental game. Sure. And that is what hurts about it. Sports becoming more developed. There's a lot of resources out there that players can rely on. So Filler now winning four in a row. Sets are leveled at one each. It's a best of three sets unless it goes to Hill Hill in the third set. And I think if you look at the overall performance, uh, it'll be a complete switch. I believe uh, Bautista in the first set had a nine, 900 compared to a 700 uh, fillers. And I think we'll see that switch now. And we do, 920, oops, 923 in set number two and 813 for Bautista in set number two. And totally, they're still 50 points difference, but pretty close. Same number of games, they both won five at this point. Filler's a little more, uh, a little stronger with two breaking runs. Getting kind of that consistent spread where five or so balls are going over to the left side rail. That will lead to tie-ups a lot of the time. In this case, going to have to deal with the four. Watch out for the cue ball coming around the rails. It's okay inside it. Seven balls along the left long rail now. Five's tied up as well. Be a lot of moving in this rack. I wonder if he's going to hit it off the top rail and try to send it one bank across. Maybe the cue ball will stick there. Just like that. Oops. Yeah, we'll have the two here. Again, four or five aren't really available. Keep in mind, if this set is tied to three, it goes to a shootout. So you don't have to win four games, you gotta win the first three. And of course, you wanna win four and avoid the shootout. Taylor can get really aggressive here and play up for a bank on the four and run the cue ball into the five, but I don't know, I don't think there's that much value in that. It's just gonna back off. Maybe try to pocket the four and play some kind of safe with the five. The thing about that is that if he, if the four was sharp on the side, it was missable regardless. 
But if he did get on the five, the safes weren't going to be easy. I mean, usually in a spot like that, you look to get to the the problem first, so you don't have to win two battles. Like in this case, Filler's going to talking of in Filler's case, he'll he'll have to win two battles. He'll have to win the safety battle on the fourth and the safety battle on the five. Now here with his three cushion experience, I'm wondering if he's going to hit the seven first. No, hit the four ball, and he was doing exactly what I thought he might be doing is uh, slowly just hitting the four, going into the four, bouncing it past the seven, the cue ball stays for a safety. But he was confident enough to try a sure. slow controlled kick there. That type of background yeah. helps with those shots. So we're going to be seeing some kind of three foul attempt now because the seven and eight are also tied up. Shot by Filler there again, four away from the seven in the area as much as he could. I think he hits this. His three cushion background. He's on two. Now. And I was wrong. He's on two. And he's got filler has a nice little area where to land the cue ball for foul number three, but he's got to get to it. Yeah, kind of think quick here. Still on the 30 second shot clock. I believe he has his extension in the rack if he doesn't see something right away. Going to be favoring the 7 8 or the 5 6. <clears throat> easiest way to get behind either of those stacks. I don't mind this. I think he's thinking about going thin up table and coming two rails into it. I like it. I like driving the cue ball right behind the 7-8. I don't think he's going to do that though. I think he's going behind the 6. He'll be going at it thinner. Trying to hide the 4 and the cue ball. Oh. Four came past the seven eight. He's on two, regardless. Now it's what he does with it. It will be a successful three foul. Yeah, Filler was trying to block a lot of the kicking avenues towards the four, leaving it behind the seven eight. Just misjudged it a bit. Batista's well, just gonna go one rail here. Oh, I can even see it. I like the one rail. He might make it. Straight across. Just kick straight across. Just see if he could see it. If, if he could go directly at it, he would. It's too much of a risk to be kicking when you're on two fouls. If yeah. You see the ball. Wouldn't mind a two railer either off the bottom. Wow. So they're going to get away with one here. It's three fouls. So regrouping time for Batista. Bit of a look of concern on his face. Yeah, I didn't think he missed miss that ball. I thought he would make contact. But as I look at that, I like the, I like the two rail shot. The bottom rail. Inside. Yeah, I'm still laying at about 25% overall match break and run percentage or match ball popping percentage off the break. Sticking with the same one. See if he goes a little more square this time. With this so cut it over, made the one. Knocking on the two. And that's the, that's the beauty of random uh, racking. You don't know where the ball's going to be racked, so you don't know where it's going to go. Yeah, no, no repetitive breaks in this turn, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, just put some distance here. Maybe the cue ball on the rail, which is always a good idea when you're pushing. Just has an offensive look. The cue ball's running into the 10. If it does, he's unlikely to get on the 3. Play the cue ball kind of in line with the 4-6. Safe. 
pretty simple safety there to play behind the, the 4 6 with the object ball. Might have a window. It does. I'm not sure what you can do with that. Actually, as I see this, if the six balls, it might cut right down the. No, it can't. You can't see the whole left side of the ball. There's as much value in guaranteeing the half ball kick side there. Half roll for filler. Worked out well. safe here where you just try to stick the cue ball where the two is, but the three's in the way of that play. So you know. Oh, a little nibble off the nine and into the pocket he went. And this is what can happen, right? You know, you start making a couple mistakes, then you catch a bad roll, and, and against a player like Filler, it gets out of hand real quick. Snowballs, and then uh, Filler just builds a snowman out of you. It's going to have some work to do to get on the four here. I believe it pockets past the 10 and also pockets on the side where he's pointing right now. Considering both options. Kind of like the one in the corner, it's playing into the angle. A lot of chance to run into the six that way. <laughs> both options. So he's got to play safe here. Not quite far firing at all cylinders. But he does have the lead in the set. He'll keep it simple and just get behind the 10-5. Too hard. Looks like it. Left the right edge. that can naturally play the four into the middle of the short rail here. Not a lot of coverage up table. Be careful of the scratch around the seven. Cue ball's kind of tracking right towards the seven, so I have to play a fair bit of right spin on the ball to get around it. It's good to go that way, and that's a good shot. As Filler in a decently bad spot here, he'll hit it. Kick safes aren't quite as likely from this position. Need the ball, he's okay with the cue ball. Give him a thrill though. <clears throat> See what Filler does here. It's an offensive chance on the five. Went kind of half at it. Favored the overcut side, knew that was going to leave the five ball safe. You know, by where the cue ball ended up, I, don't, I think he went at it half heartedly, knowing the safety was always there. Yeah. Moving from the players in this rack. Mm -hmm. Bautista showing some experience. Easy kick. Might be able to see part of it. Just see the end. You go with this, don't I you? think so, yeah. yeah. I think you go, you cut it right in. Especially where you're at in the match, you can't really back down at this point. The cue ball's looking good. Experience to use both rails there, both long, short rails.
Just a little bit of left English to come straight down. Keeping it simple. Yeah, this is a close one. Batista has been breaking well. He's, he's on 100% for his break so far over the course of the three sets. It's a shot on the first shot, he's dangerous. Shout out to the sponsors, Q Sports International, Yalin, Predator, Kamui, Samsung TV, Pro Billiard TV, Rums of Puerto Rico, and Medalla Light. We've yet to get some of that Rums of Puerto Rico. We'll deserve one after this week. I think so. So will all the players. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a little party afterwards. Someone at Derby City put on a party. I think it was uh, Mike Wang from uh, Omega. Mm -hmm. He um, he had, had a room and put on a open bar party for everyone, if I remember correctly. One straight back, breaking very well. Easy on the two, except there could be a carom available on the five. Not quite going to draw the ball a lot. Safes aren't actually straightforward here. You have to consider the carom, considering the safes aren't that easy. I saw something where that might work out as a safety. Is a three rail, three railer to the bottom corner pocket, and cue well behind the four. I thought about that because mm -hmm. the yeah. two will be coming back into big a big coverage area. Right. Those five balls, two by the side, and the three in the middle there provide great cover. But those are those are shots you see from the booth. When you're at the table, you're looking at pocket balls, and, and those are hard to see. Mm -hmm. This was a good save here. Got a half roll from the 10 behind the 3, and Filler's in a bad spot now. Too close to jump. Looks like there might be a kick available before between the side pocket and the 5, coming around 2 or 3. Oh, he has the short rail. He's going to end up behind a three ball. No point, no point. No shot for Batista. Uh, Combo's a little off angle. Off the five. Could be that as well, yeah. You'd want to play it straight in if you could. But yeah, it might be lying directly into off the five. Two's going up table in a safe area. Got him between. Come with that again. I got cut you off there. He just got caught in between. Caroming off the five and playing the six directly in. But the way he played the cue ball, I think he was actually playing more safe. I'll check the cue ball here. Oh, that worked out nicely for him. Yeah, right edge will be nice for Batista. Get aggressive and try to pocket this. Quite swerving enough, and Filler's going to get the advantage after this exchange. Likely going to have to combo the 7 9. First five balls set up well. Kind of running into the six here. Might be okay going three rails forward. Okay. Just trying to get close to the seven. 
Seven's tracking a little to the right off the nine. Won't be 100% on controlling the seven here. Really have anything to come underneath it. There's the cue ball. Oh, it's not there. <laughs> cue ball's in a very tough place for him. If he goes up table, uh, he's got nowhere to hide. If he comes down table, he might go into the nine ball straight up and not be able to get behind it, the nine or the ten. From filler there. Just left the right edge from Batista. You try to purposely kick this into the um, cross rail along to leave it on the short rail. One rail kind of. The the two ball there. Aggressive. I think there's something with just cutting the seven thinly up the rail and trying to use the eight as a blocker. Could even try to draw below the nine if you have enough of the seven. I do like that. There it is. Well, coming down to crunch time here, and Batista has the edge in this rack. Only three ball, only four balls on the table. Tough to get a kick safe. Kick it in, but it looks like he's going for the jump cue. Quite sure what's going to happen off the jump. Left side of the seven, maybe bringing the cue ball back to where it is now. Good try, but uh, it was always tough to hold the seven up table if you played that. And left him in between. Open shot, available safety to the bottom, but he'll be aggressive, I think, and go for a pocket. He should position. be. Yeah, he yeah. should. Yeah. Seven just ended up right in between the side and the corner. You can play it in the corner, thin cut. Shot. Yeah, inside English to hold, perfect. Cue ball very nicely there. So Batista one game away from guaranteeing a shootout. 2-1 game lead in the third set overall. And again, still 100% on his break. Must be about 7 for 7 on his break so far. The man from Mexico has been pretty steady. Pretty steady all the way. Yeah, big spot for him playing in the World Championships. Playing the number one player in the world. He's performing well. Yeah, look at that break success all the way across there, 100%. Very few missed shots, or very small missed shot total for this point in the match. Filler's only missed shots were missed cues. Batista only on two missed shots. A lot of fouls from Batista. Leading to a lot of the games that Filler's won. Three of them were in that one game where he got three fouls. That's right. Yeah. So big, big break here for Ruben. Dry and Filler's gonna have the first chance here in the fourth game of the second set. Critical moment to come up dry. This comes down from the two in the side. Good ball can play around three rails here. Between the eight nine, above the seven, above the five. Oh. 
gonna have to run back down for the four. Yeah, if he's straight enough to play it with just righty will. Perfect position. He wants the left side of the cue ball here. The six is blocking a bit of the left side. Looks like he can just get into it. Punched out to avoid that. That's the rack looking good. Can see Filler kind of getting a little pep in his step walking around there. Knowing what he has to do in this match. one here. Both players one game away from forcing a guaranteed shootout. They'll both be looking to win the match in regulation. This is an elimination match. Early drama here at the World Ten Ball Championships. Traded off some racks, we're tied at two in the third set. And as you said, Eric, one rack away. If either player wins two in a row, set's over. Big break coming from Joshua. I think he's only been successful once, right? No, he had two breaking runs, so. Probably on about 30% success overall. He's got to find his way above 50, really. Well, this is where it really counts, so let's see how he handles it. Didn't change anything. Yes, it's still sticking with this. Into the table, break from the side rail. Get it square this time, though. One in, 10 in. Shot on the two, no. Ten will spot. Keep in mind, no early tens. This is WPA rules. If you just joined us, uh, Eric Horlifson and myself, George Tehachab, bringing you the live action here at the Rio in this Predator World Ten Ball. Tester push here for Batista. Position's a little too tough to go for, but he is going for it. Watch this shot. No, just elevated to play safe. Didn't go well. Don't think he blocked the angle for the five. Oh, he might have. Bit of hope there for Batista to get back to the table. Got up enough for the three ball here. Slow it down though. Could go two short rails, but the eight's kind of in the way of that he's track. Gonna, he's gonna nibble off the eight, I believe. It's gonna be real close. Yeah, that'll send the cue ball towards the four. No, he went just back down. He just went safe all the way. Interesting. Good recognition there. But he couldn't really have great position on the four. Yeah. He'd have a tough shot on three. Part of the factor there is that he, at some point, he wants to guarantee position on the four where maybe he has a chance to break into the five. And just when he was going to run into the eight, who knows what would, exactly what was going to happen in the cue ball. That's a great point, Eric. Is going from the four to the five to develop it. Mm -hmm. Great point. Just got away with this. The left edge. Kind of playing into a double kiss here. 
<laughs> Feller might bank this or come down behind the tent. No, I don't think he wants to do that because it just sells out if he doesn't get get to it. Yeah, I think putting left spin on it's going to avoid the double kiss a little more. Still there. It's going to have move three. Behind the four. Perfectly safe. How are they rolling, Mr. Bautista? Um. Well, he had the edge, took advantage of it nicely. That was the speed. Perfect. That's a big shot there from Batista. And the 510s become open up now. <laughs> Joey's going to tie it up again. Watch out for the carom here. Looks like it'll be leading into the long rail a little bit. But Batista will have a look at it. That's something a player hates to do, being tied at two, knowing that the third game is extremely important and giving up ball in hand intentionally. Karen must not be there, so Batista's trying to play the key ball behind the six. He he's trying to break open the five and stay behind the six. Yeah. Smart move. Neither of them happen. Filler actually can play into it here. Has to make a decision if he wants to come with a big offensive shot here. Just a note for amateurs, I mean, these are some of the best players in the world, and look how safe they're playing, because they know the percentages, right? So mm -hmm. it's, you know, they're, they're not afraid to kind of go back and forth when they need to. The cue ball, speed the scratch. That's enough to shot. Straight in, not too much, he has to settle for a long shot on the four. Yeah. No chance of developing the five from there. I don't think so. He's going to try to follow it and create some kind of angle. Not even. Not sure here. You can continue playing safe on the four. I don't feel like if you pocket it, any kind of safe on the five is going to be very easy. He's not sure either. I don't know if he has an extension or not, but it looks like he hasn't had his mind made up. Well, one thing about Josh, it doesn't take him long to make up his mind. Yeah, he's a very good pool, natural pool instincts. Sure. And if you give him 10 seconds, he'll figure something out. Just looking for the best option there. Interesting rack here. Eight ball's going to come into play. He played that actually. It's a good shot. Big factor in this rack is that even if you try to pocket the four, it'll be very tough to play safe on the five. So they're both trying to maneuver around where they can actually get a shot on the four and play the cue ball into the five. It might happen here. The only thing I can see for a good safety on the five is to get below it. Then go two rails and try to get behind the six. Touchy, touchy, you hit the plate mm -hmm. perfect. But um, it, you could lock it up. He's got a contact. How's it going to turn out? It's close. I think it turned out good for him. I think you can pocket it in the corner pocket and come down for the six. This angle will give us a good, yep, sure can. Shot by Batista. An inning safe exchange there, Batista getting the best of it in the end. <laughs> oh, looking good here. I mean, real good. Yeah, keep balls on the rail, or he's a little straight with the angle. The eight's close enough to the pocket that he should be able to get it back towards the nine. Just stops it there, or will he try to bump it off and risk missing the shot? I think 
trying to get yeah. even just a bit off the rail while helping with position here. That's what he's done. He's going straight across. Yeah, I just don't want to risk yep. spinning it for that distance and being so close to the rail. I'll tell you what, he's a little straight here, though. He's got some angle going to the right. He can fall through two rails, but this is tough. Yeah, that's a big a shot here for Batista. It's a big shot and a big stroke. Got it. Caught the point a little bit, so left himself a little more angle than he would have, would have liked. Another big pressure spot for Batista. See if he can pass the test here. John just got a, I mean, Josh just got uncomfortable in this chair all of a sudden. Yeah, he knows. Big shot, big yeah. Shot. What a shot. Nice two shots there at the end, the, the nine and the ten to get the three. And Batista will be guaranteed a shootout in this first round loser side match. Yeah, well, he's had, he's only broken dry once. That's right. And so, um, you know, could always pull off a break and run here for the for the match win as well. I don't believe he has a break and run in the set in the match. Yeah, this hasn't got many shots on the one. Now's the time, maybe. the same break as he should. It's been successful. Sign there. Yep. One's not there, but he'll have a chance to play the first save for the rack. And you can draw this back behind the end of the three just to get behind the four. Yep. Good, good cluster of balls down mm -hmm. by the top right corner pocket that he can play behind. He's going to have a chance. Position on the two is very tough. So tough that he might play safe. He just rarely, rarely misses open shots, regardless of the distance. Had such a small angle there, mm -hmm. took advantage of it. A little hard, he would have had a good shot on the two. It's going to go after it. Batista is going to have a chance to win the set here. Oh, it opened up for him, too. What a result this has been. I believe that'll be one of Filler's only missed shots. Does the four pass the five? Not quite full pocket. No, it doesn't pass at all, but he can combo the four into the five. To see how that turns out. I'm sure what Batista's just kind of getting his extension here. And you can see the concerned look on his face. Sure. Knows, knows he's up against it now. There, getting out of the angle well with very little. He's a big favorite to make the combo on the five. Just has to think about how he can control the four. He lays perfect four. He goes into the five, the four ball goes to the short rail, and the cue ball goes to the left, leaving him straight in. Yeah, I think it might come across into the seven, which can work as well. It just leaves it over the pocket. If you just draw out of this, you can maybe fall. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit of left on it to go to the left. Oh, just like that. Wow, looking good. 
And these five balls and uh, and filler could be eliminated from the tournament. Major no mistakes. Yep. Yeah. Hundred points difference in Fargo. But again, to make the point that we were talking about earlier in the match, anything over a 650 is capable of uh, you know making that up because they'll play a good hundred po points above their Fargo, and running racks is what they do. Yeah, that's the variable here. Once you get around Batista's level, he can he, he can run out enough to neutralize filler. These two balls to uh, send filler packing. Oh, you uh, got straight. Yeah, I'm going to come back to about where I'm at. Just a little drop past the side pocket, and he's going to like the ten ball. One more ball for a very strong performance here from Batista. surprise here. He still have three rounds to get back to the final 16, but look for him to be dangerous, breaking well, shooting well. Very confident now, too. Mm -hmm. Interesting match to open up the day, and we'll be here with you guys all day. Next round will be at in half an hour at 12 o'clock Pacific time. Before Jay and Shane, this is Eric Corlison. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you. 